Here are some of the things that you should not do while you're trying to study and learn. Please do not reread notes over and over and over and over again. Please do not highlight everything that you read. Please don't cram the night before and please do not do any type of multitasking while you're studying. This means no TV shows, no eating, no talking to friends, no jogging. Like really just buckle down if it's going to be two hours, if it's going to be four hours. You can have maybe a little bit of some music in the background, but try and just focus on the subject that you are trying to learn. Minimize as much distractions and multitasking as much as possible. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. This is Phil's Guide to Side D. This channel is dedicated to all things psychology, wellness, and graduate school. Today we're talking about how to study effectively either as a student or even as a professional. Uh, now one of the things that I do is that I try and help students get into graduate school to be successful in graduate school and also as well in their early career. Uh, and if you like these videos, please be sure to subscribe and check out other videos that we will provide you in the future. There is a lot of research that shows that when you go into your lecture hall, you actually should not take any notes while your professor is lecturing. And one of the things that I've told students before is that typically a lot of professors will give their PowerPoints in advance. And one of the things I tell them is to kind of review or skim through those PowerPoints uh, before they actually go into the lecture. Uh, and if your professor doesn't provide those PowerPoint lecture slides, maybe ask them or email them to see if they will. But try and kind of just read through it right before you go into the lecture. Then when you go into the lecture, don't take notes. Just literally focus in on what the professor is saying. Now, if you have some type of study tool like uh, where it can record the lecture for you or maybe the, the professor will provide the recorded lecture for you anyways, then you really don't need to take notes. All you really need to focus on is just being focused and present in what the professor is saying. Now, the reason reason why this works for a lot of students is that you can get so caught up in writing down what the professor is saying, typing it up, making the notes, and really your mind isn't focused on what they're saying, that your mind is focused on how you're organizing the notes. Right after that lecture is done, try and recall the information. This might be difficult because sometimes in graduate school, you have classes back to back to back to back. But as much as you can, usually you have maybe a five minute break, a 10 minute break before your next lecture. What I would encourage you to do is as soon as that lecture is done, try and recall what you remember. Try and recall what the professor spent the most time in. Later that night, later that day, when you're actually studying, you can listen to that recording back, or you can try and fill in the gaps of your learning by looking at the PowerPoint slides. Now, the reason why this is so important is that, first of all, you've implemented pre-testing, which is prompting your mind to pay attention to certain things that your professor will say once you get into the lecture hall, so that now you have the basic foundations of how to actually take really good notes uh, because you've pre-tested, you've been mindful, and now you're trying to recall the information. Now you can fill in the gaps and create more of a comprehensive note sheet for you. And what I always encourage students to do is try and turn some of those notes into questions or into testing material so that you can test yourself. You can use your, your notes as essentially testing material, uh, helping guide you to learn the material a lot better. If you're going to use flashcards, here's the thing. Flashcards have been known to be kind of helpful, but not really as helpful as you think. You don't want to use someone else's flashcard. It is really important that when you learn, there it's it's active, right? So you want to make your own flashcards. You don't want to use someone else's. You want to make your own flashcards because that is really important in terms of the active learning style. But I think what's more important about using flashcards is not using flashcards and you know seeing what they are and then flipping it. You want to see how all of your flashcards connect to one another. When you can look at all of the flashcards that you have, how do they relate to one another? How do they connect with one another? Is there a certain question that you can put into a certain category? Is there an answer that's familiar with another answer from your flashcard? You need to group all of your flashcards together and create a mind map of your flashcards. Having much more of a 
synthesis of the information on the flashcards. And this is where you can try and explain some of these topics to someone who has no idea about the subject, whether it's biochemistry, chemistry, neuroscience, neuropsychology, explain it to the lay person who has no idea what the terminology is, what you're even talking about it. If you get stuck and explain to them, that means that you actually don't know the material as much as you think. So that means you need to go back to your flashcards, go back to your logic Mac, go back to your notes, create those questions from your notes, create those flashcards, build that logic map, and then go back and try and explain it to the person again. And again, the, the simpler that you can explain it to them, the faster that they can understand what you're talking about. It, it is a good sign that you actually know what you're talking about. And here's the thing, that's what professors do, right? Professors have years and years and years of education and training, and they're teaching you the material. Everyone knows that the best professors are the ones that can break down those really complex material into bite-sized pieces. One of the things that I started to do in graduate school, and this might seem a little intense, is that I would try and do it in two or three or four hour increments. And so I would uh, maybe steady for two hours and then take a 30 minute break. Or I would steady for three hours, take a 45 minute break. I would steady for four hours and take a one hour break. Now, this may seem like a lot. It may seem really intense. It may seem like, oh, I don't know if I can focus for that long. But for me, the larger Pomodoro technique was much more better for me. I felt like I retained a lot more information. I felt like once I got into the zone, I could stay in the zone for a fairly decent amount of time. If that might potentially be helpful for you, you can also try that as well. But I would say, especially for all of these techniques, you might have to experiment with some of them to figure out what's going to work for you. If you have any questions about any of this, or if you need more help or more assistance or more guidance in surviving graduate school, please reach out to me at all my socials at Phil's Guide to Side D. And with that, I will hopefully see you all in the next video.